let's go ahead and see what's going on here with Bronco. So Bronco skydives from a stationary helicopter. So he's just jumping out of a helicopter. And various stages of the fall are shown in diagrams A through D. So looking at here, I'm going to see what's going on as he's falling. Using Newton's second law, find Bronco's net force and acceleration in each diagram. Um, we need to know that Bronco's mass is 83.3 kilograms. Right? We need to know his mass because in order to find force, we need a mass, and we need an acceleration. Um, it says his weight is a constant 833 newtons. Um, we want to figure out what his acceleration is at every single point. So right away, when he jumps out of that plane, if there's no air resistance acting on him quite yet, that total of 833 newtons that he weighs, that is the net force that is bringing him down to the ground, is gravity. Right. We know that gravity acts at 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, in this case, we're just going to round it off to, off to 10. So let's go with our F equals ma. I know that his mass is 83.3 kilograms. I know that the force is 833. How do we get A by itself? divide by 83.3 because that's what it's being multiplied by right now. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. Algebra rules. A equals 833 divided by 83.3 is 10 meters per second squared and that's exactly what we'd round gravity off to. So that's how I got this. Now when there's some um, air resistance that acts against any object including good old Bronco here as he's, as he's skydiving, um, it's going to act against gravity, right? So gravity is still pulling him down with 833 newtons worth of force because his mass hasn't changed. Um, but now we've got some air resistance that's resisting his fall, that's holding him up, 350 newtons of it to be exact. So the amount of net force that's actually bringing him towards the ground is no longer 833. was to begin with because there was no net, no... Um, air resistance acting on Bronco yet here, but now there is air resistance. So our net force is 833 down, 350 up, so 833 minus 350 gives me 483 newtons. When I go to plug that into F equals MA, I've got a net force of 483, because that's how much force is actually causing him to accelerate downwards, because of the 833 newtons, 350 of those newtons are being resisted by air resistance, so I'm left with 483. His mass hasn't changed. So his acceleration, though, because his force has decreased, it would make sense that his acceleration would also decrease, and in this case it does. 483, um, when divided by 83.3, is going to give me 5.8 meters per second squared. And we would do the same thing throughout the rest of this problem. Figure out what our net force is down. 833 minus 700 gives me 133. Plug it into F equals MA, I end up with 1.6 here. Do the same thing with D. In this case, 833 down. It's canceled out by 833 up, so I have no net force acting on my on my guy here, on Bronco. But that doesn't mean that he stopped in midair. That's a really common misconception. It's like, what? He stopped? How does that make any sense? It doesn't. He's still moving. He's just not accelerating. So at this point, D and E would be considered terminal velocity. Same amount of air resistance as force of gravity, so zero newton net force, which means that he's still moving, but he's moving at the same rate. So if he's going really fast, let's say 100 meters per second, he's just gonna keep going 100 meters per second. He's not gonna slow down, he's not gonna speed up, but he's still moving real fast, which is why you need a parachute. Because what a parachute does when you open it is it increases the amount of air resistance See, we actually end up with deceleration taking place because it will overcome the force of gravity and of slowing us down until we reach um, a velocity that's constant. All right, so Bronco's going to experience acceleration anywhere where he has acceleration. Diagram A, B, and C. He experiences no acceleration at diagram D and E, right? no acceleration, no acceleration, um, and the whole reason he doesn't is because of air resistance, which leads him to terminal velocity.
Um, we talked about this problem before. It should read, if Bronco were heavier, would his terminal velocity be greater, the same or less? Why? There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can argue this. Um, we'd say that his size, if, he, if his size stays the same and he gets heavier, um, just more massive, I guess it should say, then his terminal velocity is not going to change because he's got the same amount of air resistance. But if he were to become larger in terms of volume or surface area, then his terminal velocity would actually um, reach, reach maximum earlier because there would be more air resistance acting on him sooner. Uh, but we have to assume that everything is, assuming everything's the same, what happens if it becomes heavier? Um, still just as aer aer um, aerodynamic. And so he's going to fall at the same rate because gravity pulls everything down at the same rate. If I add more mass, I'm also going to add more pull of gravity at the same rate. So I'm going to end up keeping my acceleration the same.